Hello. Uh, I wanted to show some of you guys my newest acquisition and um, I wanted to do it a little differently than some of the other people who show these types of objects. Uh, first of all, it is my brand new Smith & Wesson 686 revolver and 357 Magnum. And it's empty, unloaded at this time. What I wanted to show or some of the uh, engineering principles and features that goes into this. I know uh, not a lot of uh, gun channels will do this. So first thing I want to talk about is <clears throat> obviously the cylinder holds six bullets, but if you can look right here, there's a little pin right there, and it's on a spring. And at the end of the ejector rod, I'm going to push that same pin. And you can see that that pin goes all the way through this entire assembly. And what that does, inside here, trying to get the light just right, is a little, uh, little opening right there, at the end of the pencil, that aligns with this pin and pushes it, this pin then, the spring then pushes it back that way. And also, at the other end, and I can't see it very well, but there's a little spring-loaded tab in there too that aligns with the hole here. So that when you close it, it locks in, uh, in tightly. Now you notice that still rotates. So that's not that's not good. That can't be right, right? So when you push the uh, cylinder release, <clears throat> it pushes that little, uh, the light's terrible in here, pushes a little pin that, that pushes on the this pin and releases both this pin and releases both the tab here and the tab here allows the cylinder to come out. Now the reason it was still rotating in there is because I had not engaged the indexing tab. See the little semicircular tab right there, which is spring-loaded. Push it down with your finger. <clears throat> when you close the cylinder, try and get this so that it's not on the tab. I want to close it, and it's see it's not on the tab. What you normally do is you index it yourself to see it spring up into that little tab, and then whenever the weapon is is cocked or fired in double action, the uh, the mechanism rotates the cylinder to the next chamber, and that little tab dropped out and then went back. And then it engaged when it reached the, uh, the little detents. And that is to keep the cylinder openings perfectly aligned with the, the front of the barrel, which is called the forcing cone. Indexed. Now, uh, there's a set of gears right here that allow, I can't see it very well, but inside this little slot right here is a kind of a mechanical finger that will move. You can actually grab that gear on the front and rotate the cylinder. It does this in both double action and single action. I have some, uh, some of these snap caps that I'm going to put in here now because I'm going to dry fire the weapon and I don't want to damage the firing pin. Although some people will tell you you can't 
damage the firing pin. And some others will tell you that you can't. So why be, why take a chance on an $800 gun? So when you, uh, in, in uh, double action, that means there are two actions taking place. With one with the pull of the trigger, you rotate the cylinder and pull the hammer back, firing the round. Single action, you pull the hammer back yourself, and then there's just one action to fire the round. I also picked up a speed loader. This is an HKS speed loader. It's pretty cool too. It's got some engineering features. Let's uh, stick some bullets in here. These are the snap caps again. I'm not using real bullets. And they're sitting in there rather loosely. There we go. They're sitting in there rather loosely. And you give the Little twist. Now they're uh, held in there rather well. They won't come out. And the way it works is you uh, take your cylinder, you align the align the uh, speed loader, and then give it a little twist. And all six of the rounds drop in there at once. The way it works is there's a little pin, a little, a little ball with a spring on it. And that little pin is going across that ball. That you see it being pushed down there. That's the that's the uh, that's the way it keeps it from moving around. Down at the bottom, I don't know if you can see, down at the bottom, this is open. Nope, you can't see them. Down at the bottom, there are little fingers. Light in here. Oh, there we go. See that little finger there at the bottom? My finger. And it moved out of the way. Look at the bottom. Right there. So I put something white behind it. That'll help. Okay. Well, what it actually does, a little finger in there, will actually push the round towards the top, towards the outside. Can you see that? My camera angle is terrible. It will actually push it towards the outside. And it will also grab a little lip on the bullets. When you release it, gravity just drops them out. Okay, one of the other things I wanted to show you, and this is loaded with the non real snap cap bullets. is the hammer uh, block safety feature. Now, um, you notice the position, this, this is the hammer. And if you look, if you look down in there, I don't know if you can see it, but anyway, the firing pin is right in there. It's exposed right now because the hammer pin, the hammer block is not up. And when you go ahead and Fire that round. Now look at how far in the hammer is. It goes well beyond the frame of the revolver. And then when that's because I'm still holding the trigger. When I release the trigger, watch the hammer. It comes back out. And that's because it's now hitting that hammer block, which uh, prevents. Uh, the hammer from contacting the firing pin from jarring or dropping or uh, something like this, something being hit. Back in the old cowboy days, they used to uh, have to carry a 
five rounds because the hammer, the uh, firing pin, was on the end of the hammer. And uh, it could have happened in the past that with a round chambered uh, over the barrel, that a sudden jar from dropping it or something landing on it perhaps could uh, cause a negligent, <laughs> negligent unwanted discharge. So the, that's another one of the cool engineering features about this, uh, about this revolver that I wanted to show you. I can't show you exactly how it works because if I could show you how it worked, it wouldn't work. Uh, the only way I can do it is through showing you how it makes the hammer stay away from the firing pin by the uh, depth of the by the depth in, into the frame. Another thing, which is pretty cool, I think, on this side of the frame, this uh, surface here is perfectly orthogonal. It's a complete right angle. It's it's not sharp, but it's uh, you know it's it's very much a right angle. On this side, it is curved, and that allows cylinder to swing out. If it were a perfect right angle like it is on the other side, the cylinder with that little tiny tolerance there. I don't know if you can see it, but there it is. Little tiny tolerance there might uh, impact the edge. <clears throat> Another thing is cool that I think is these little shelves here. Now this part of the revolver is called the crane, and it allows the what it what it does is allows the uh, well there goes all my snap caps allows the cylinder to swing out away from the revolver for loading and unloading. And it's, uh, it's, on, a, it's on a pin that is retained by a detent in the pin by this screw. So what happens when you need to eject the rounds? I'll see if I can show you this. You see that the since this is spring-loaded, the force on this to eject the rounds is transmitted partially to the cylinder. You can hear it clicking. That clicking is actually the cylinder touching this little shelf. That actually keeps the cylinder from being driven forward, or actually rearward, uh, when you use the extractor rather than it puts the pressure on this shelf rather than on this tiny little screw. And uh, if anybody asks, that's the reason I got this revolver is to demonstrate some engineering principles to you guys. Get some time.